Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, today we will continue talking about electronics, um, which means usage of electricity for other purposes than um, like mechanical rotation or heat. Well, primarily electronics are used in radio, television, telephones, etc. Now, the previous lecture was about one particular device called diodes and um, how it's arranged, how it works, its main principles. And today we will continue uh, talking about another device called triode. So triodes are kind of slightly different than diodes and they have a slightly different purpose, but it's a relatively simple electronic device which is used everywhere. I mean, wherever you go and you have electricity, you will have triodes and diodes and resistors <laughs> and some other things. Anyway, so triodes are just one of the most elementary electronic devices and that's what we were talking about today. Um, this lecture is part of the course called Physics for Teens presented on Unizor.com. On the same site um, you can find the prerequisite course Math for Teens. Um, now the site is completely free, there are no ads, so you can use it as, at, 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 at your purpose any, any time. And um, for those who are interested in challenging themselves, the course has a lot of exercises and exams. You can take it as many times as you want and you will be basically graded. Okay, so, triodes. Um, the main purpose of this device called triode is to amplify signals. Well, and amplification is definitely needed um, for radio, for instance, when a very weak signal actually is caught by, by antenna and then you will and, and then you want to basically amplify it. So we will talk about how this particular device is um, made, arranged, what's the principle of its work. And I will use the old-fashioned vacuum tube construction just to demonstrate the principle. Contemporary triodes and diodes and everything else actually is um, uh, produced differently. They're using semiconductor integrated uh, schemas, etc. But in any case, the most important is the principle, and that's the purpose of the whole course, actually. I don't go to any real technical details, but the principle is important. And the principle is very well demonstrated um, when we examine the very first triodes made by certain inventors, and they are based on vacuum tubes. Okay, <coughs> so let's start with whatever we had the previous lecture, the diodes. If you remember, diodes have um, the heated cathode, which has certain um, electronic cloud. Um, because it's heated and electrons are um, uh, they're making very very fast movements because of the heat heat um, um, exaltates them <coughs> what's the word and we're looking for the word excites them okay and um, they have they, they form the cloud electron electrons cloud around this it's called thermionic emission. So the thermionic emission, uh, the heated cathode has this electronic uh, electrons cloud. So this is a minus, for instance, okay? Now this is a plus, and this is anode. So now, um, if this is minus and this is plus, the electrons um, in this cloud are attracted by um, positive anode 
and they flow and there is an electric current. But if this is plus and this is minus, there are no excess of electrons here. So there is no cloud. So the uh, current is not really going. Um, uh, the electrons actually are not going from minus to plus. Um, and not this cold, so electrons do not have any kind of, there is no thermionic emission on there because I know this cold, cathode is hot. So it's always, electrons are always going from hot to cold, okay? So that's why if you have a, an alternating current here, then when this is minus and this is plus electrons move this way when this is minus and this is plus electrons do not move so that's why we have the graph of um, flow of electricity like this instead of if we do not have this if we have a direct connection this is the variable alternating current going back and forth back and forth but in case if we have this construction, we have basically cut um, that piece. And we had some other smart devices to make this smoother. That was in the last lecture. But I wanted to remind you the construction of the um, diodes because this is the first step in creating um, a triode. Now, what happens if we will put a grid negatively charged here. Well, when cathode is negative, you have this thermionic emission, you have cloud of electrons, but if this is negative, it actually repels all these electrons, and electrons could not really go that way. So, my point is that while it's still working as a diode, so to speak, I mean, only if it's negative and this is positive, we can really think about electric current, not when this is positive and this is negative. However, even in this case, the flow of electrons can be controlled by the voltage between this and this. So between these two, between cathode and the grid, if there is a, a ne negative voltage here, then this flow of electrons will be, well, smaller, basically, if you wish. Um, so this is the main principle. By changing the voltage, negative voltage, relative to cathode on the grid, we can prevent partially or completely the flow of electrons. Now, why do we need it? We need it for this purpose. This will be, the voltage between these two, will be our input voltage, so to speak. And the voltage which we can get from between cathode and anode would be our output voltage, so to speak. I'll talk about a concrete schema a little bit later. But this is the purpose. So, by changing the potential between anode and cathode, we can change the intensity of the flow. But changing the voltage between grid and cathode, we can regulate this flow. And that's the main kind of idea behind um, the amplifier, which allows to even smaller input voltage between grid and cathode convert into synchronous, but by amplitude higher um, uh, amperage between the uh, cathode and anode. Okay, so that's the principle, and uh, what I would like actually to do right now is to present a concrete schema, um, very imperfect. Uh, however, it demonstrates actually the principle of um, amplifying the signal. 
Okay. So, it's done the following way. So let's assume that we have some kind of vacuum tube here. Okay. Um, I forgot to mention one little detail. Sometimes the cathode is arranged a little bit more, um, I would say, more sophisticated, if you wish. You see, we have to heat it, right? Because the cathode is supposed to be heated to uh, form the thermionic cloud. Um, now, if we will just connect it to the source of um, electricity, uh, so it will basically heat by electricity, by direct current, let's say. Um, it will interfere with these voltages between cathode and anode. So what's actually done, we have a parallel kind of a spi spiral here. And here we have heated element. So this is heated, but this is very close to it, so it actually heated as well, but without interference of voltage or current from this uh, battery, which is supposed to just to he just just to heat the cathode. All right. So, but this is a small detail. Main principle is: so you have this cathode and this anode, and cathode is heated. Now, let's consider that we have an input voltage. between these two. Whatever the variable signal is. It can be a radio signal, for instance, which somehow, using antenna, is converted into small um, uh, uh, oscillations of the voltage between these two, between the grid and the cathode. So this is my input voltage. Okay. Now, <coughs> on the other hand, we will have this thing connected, but we do need a source of energy. Let's say we have it DC battery here. Relatively powerful. So we have some kind of a difference of potential between cathode and anode. And this might be more powerful actually. Now this is input, okay. And now, what I will do between this, um, well, I do need some kind of a load here so we don't have a shortage. Okay, let's say this is some kind of a load. So we don't have a uh, uh, short. But we also would like to have an output voltage and output voltage is between um, cathode and anode. So this is my output voltage. Now what happens is the following. For instance, grid is neutral relatively to cathode. So there is no changing voltage or anything like this. There is zero here. Well, then what happens is um, we do have heated cathode um, and anode will be positively charged, cathode will be negatively charged, so the flow will be uh, just one way like a diode, right? Okay. Now, the intensity of this flow depends on the power of this 
source of electricity, this DC battery, right? The stronger um, the battery, the more voltage it creates between uh, anode and cathode, the more intense the flow of electrons will be, and that's why we have a higher amperage. So amperage depends on this. Now, and it can be relatively high, obviously. Now, what happens if using this negative potential on my grid, um, I will regulate this? Well, if I will put uh, some negative uh, charge relative to cathode on this grid, it will prevent electrons. So, if this is my input voltage, so it's changing let's say the radio signal, it has certain frequencies, amplitude, etc. So as this thing is changing, so the flow of electrons, however powerful it is, depending on the power of this battery, will also fluctuate. It will fluctuate in sync with fluctuation of this, but amplitude will be different because amplitude depends on this. So the flow will be different and that and therefore the output voltage between these two will also depend on the input voltage but the strengths the amplitude would depend on the strengths of this battery and obviously i have to really put some some kind of ground here so the whole thing is supposed to be grounded that's the main principle of a very very simple amplifier well obviously the real amplifiers are much more much more much more complex and they need some calculations I mean what kind of a voltage should be put here uh, and what kind of voltage is, is exists here to have a, a signal on the output which basically sufficient enough to let's say drive the the speakers so whenever the signal comes from from the radio let's say you have to amplify it and amplification will probably involve something similar to this one and as a result of this amplification the output would be in sync with this so you will see the voice in exactly the same way as your transmission comes in but amplitude will be higher which means you will hear something because otherwise the signal is very very weak whatever you're getting from antenna it's a very weak signal it can't really drive the speaker speaker is supposed to have certain additional power and that's what additional power is it regular it, it, it actually gives the strengths to this signal while being completely in sync because as this thing is changing the, um, the flow of electrons is obviously changing as well so that's why we have the same uh, synchronousness um, between input and output but the output is stronger because this battery can be strong well basically that's it um, again this is a, a kind of idea based on vacuum tubes etc these how first these uh, this is how the first triodes the first amplifiers were actually made and uh, I'm well I don't know if I can say it lucky enough or not because I remember uh, working with computers of the first generation which were made with vacuum tubes um, then a little later um, the semiconductor came and uh, obviously all these diodes and triodes they have their equivalent in semiconductors which I will describe maybe a little later when we will talk about semiconductors but again it, it's different implementation of the same idea so basically that's the, the only thing which I wanted to talk about today this is just an introduction into a very very simple electronic schema so you have just some basic understanding of how all these smart devices including televisions computers whatever else are um, arranged inside okay that's it for today thank you very much I do suggest you to read notes for this lecture on the unizor.com um, and uh,
they have some better pictures than this one, um, I hope. And uh, good luck. Thank you.